Okay, so I now we'll come back. So I was doing a review of the uh, of the of basically the, um, the the chapter related to relations and functions in class twelve, and I thought that I would uh, just for now at least uh, record one basically the exercise one point four, which is right in the end of this this chapter and then uh, after that there is some other some some more material in this chapter so it since I'm, I'm doing the chapter anyway so it doesn't really hurt to to uh, basically record uh, these exercises although I have basically done this chapter once but uh, this is uh, I will put this in a in a playlist and call it basically the same chapter but uh, review basically so so basically starting with exercise 1.4 exercise 1.4 we have um, question number one we want to determine whether or not each of the definitions of star given below gives a binary operation in the event that star is not a binary operation give justification for this so first of all in order to understand the meaning of star being a binary operation star being a binary operation Of course, there is a definition for that. So, based on the definition, we said that basically a uh, we said that a um, um, there was something over here binary operation. So. Um, we said that a binary operation star on a set A as a definition, this was definition number 10 that we had before. And I will write down the definition once and uh, we will go through the definition together. So definition number 10, we said that a binary operation star, a binary operation star, on a set A is a function is a function is a function star from A times A which is the Cartesian product of A and A to A and we said that we denote We said that we denote star of, of a comma b, we denote this by a star b, right? So, the, of course, these definitions, you need to understand them. And um, it, it's usually not, 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 I mean, you read it once and then you go through it any, in any of these chapters. When it gets, when you get past class 10, I would say, um then things get a little bit more uh, technical in math in the, in the math books and uh, so you have to basically um, understand these definitions the first time that you read them you will not understand them if the if the concept is is, is a new concept that you're learning for the first time and so the solution here is always almost always that uh, of course, you work through the chapter and do all of the exercises. That's very important. Do all of the exercises. But still, the, 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 the concept is not something that, 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 that is not, is not like, for example, when you're learning a new language, um, you, hear a word or you read a word or you look it up in a dictionary or something like that and of course well you 
understand the meaning of the word. But the word becomes a part of your working vocabulary in that language um, if you basically if you are exposed to that word at least a few times and if you use it in different situations so that it becomes a part of your thinking um, it becomes a part of your thinking mind otherwise it becomes one of those things that you learn and then you uh, basically forget after 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 some time so so basically you have to go through each of these chapters once but then the second time you have to again go through um, all of those definitions again and understand them and for example as an example to understand the definition is that for example when you say when you say that the binary operation star on a set a is, is a function is this function what this means is that first of all you need to understand what the function basically is so we said that the function basically we call we, we said that for example a function f for example from x to y and we defined functions this way this was the notation that we used and in this in in the function that we had x was some set and y was some other set and the function is is a mapping from 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 x to y meaning that some some elements or or, or well let's say that some of the elements of x are mapped to some of the elements of y meaning that then you can say that f of x is equal to y right now of course this this can be a relation as well and um, of course if it's a relation then it doesn't really matter whether all of the basically you have uh, you have basically this this set x over here and you have this this set y over here and then there is basically f over here that relates x to y right now if f is not necessarily a function not necessarily a function if you have for example a b c and d over here and if i have one two three and four over here one can be related to a can be related to one b can be related to two and c can be related to three but then d can be the pre-image of nothing meaning that you can just leave it as it is and it would be a valid relation from x to y right but then for uh, basically for uh, for f to be a function d necessarily or 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 basically all of the elements of the of the of the of the set x have to be necessarily the, necessarily the pre-image of something of some element of some distinct element in the set y right and so what that means is that for example this could not be this would not be a function unless you for example you said you said that basically f of for example d is is, is equal to 4 and then that becomes a function and moreover now basically provided that all of these elements are mapped to something then this becomes a function but then there is a problem here and that is basically that if you have a b c and d and if you have for example one two three and four over here and these are basically x and y over here then you cannot do this and call it a function and suppose that this is for example f you cannot say that f of you cannot say that, say that f of a is equal to 1 is equal to 2. That, that's just not possible. Uh, you can, of course, say that... Uh, you can, of course, this, this doesn't work. But you can say that, for example, you have a, b, c, and d. And mm -hmm. suppose that this is set x and this is 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? So, and this is set y and uh, you can say that basically and this is suppose that this is f and you can say that you can do this 
that's that's perfectly okay and f f would be a function without any problems meaning that f of a would be equal to one and f of b would also be equal to one and we have we have no problems there this is a valid function but this is not a function this is just a relation you could say uh, of course then you, then you would have to take care of these elements as well but that's another story now so that means that then basically for f to be a function first of all you all of these elements have to be the preimage of some element in the in this set y and moreover what happens is that this kind of thing this kind of thing is not allowed meaning that the, the image of, of, of any of these elements has to be distinct and something like this for example and there is of course as you know there is different types of functions there is one one functions there is unto functions there is um, bijective functions there is uh, and so on and so forth um, and uh, so then you provided that all of that is true then you can call f a function right so now in order to understand the definition you essentially need to understand all of those things about the function meaning that meaning that this this star is some rule under which some elements of this set are related to some elements of this set moreover this has to be a function meaning that all of the things that they set down here have to be have to as have to apply to this to this well to this function meaning that it has to be a function and then if that is the case then you can say that star is a binary operation on the set a right and moreover what that means is that now when when we say that for example f if f is a function from x to y what that means is that x is called the domain of the function and y is called the codomain of the function right and so in this case a basically the domain of the the domain of this binary operation is the cartesian product of a and a meaning that for example you can imagine that if a star is a binary operation on the set of real numbers then you have the cartesian product of the of r and r r and r which would be something like this which you could imagine you can have one two three four and so on and so forth this is this set is r and also you have one two three four and so on and so forth this set is also r and then the cartesian product of of r and r would be basically one related to one one related to two one related to three one related to four and then you would have two related to one two related to two two related to three two related to four and so on and so forth and so on and so forth meaning that all of these elements are related to each and every one of these elements and relative to those relations you have you get these ordered pairs as, as for example one comma one one comma two one comma three and so on and so forth all the way up to infinity all the way infinity comma infinity which is of course not possible but just for the sake of notation or for the sake of uh, talking about it basically so then the cartesian product of these of, of r and r would be all such ordered pairs such that the first basically the first element here belongs to r and the second element belongs to r and uh, basically the relation is basically built in this manner right and um, so then you can imagine that basically the the domain of this the domain of this this function is the is the cartesian product of a and a a can be any set it can be r it can be n it can be any set that you might define and the codomain of the uh, the codomain of the of the function is again the set a and 
well of course you can you can imagine that basically all of the uh, if for example star is a is a binary operation on the set of real numbers then then instead of a times a you would have r times r and you can imagine that r times r would be all of these elements over here all of a comma b for example such that uh, basically a and b belong to r for example all of these elements over here and then each and every one of those elements which is an infinite number of elements has to be the pre-image of some element in the set r for example right so this is the meaning of under this is what i mean by understanding a these definitions so if you understand this much about about for example this definition that means that you have understood it and it's usually not possible uh, i mean this this sort of understanding is usually not possible um, with uh, the first time or the second time or even the third time that you read something for example this um, this uh, uh, business of relations and functions and the domain and the codomain and the range and so on and so forth of course is one of the is one of the most important one of the one of the very basic and fundamental and most important concepts in mathematics and I had to read um, basically the chapters related to relations and functions over four or five times, over four four or five times. And still I couldn't understand it. The only thing that finally worked for me was that I wrote everything down and I made my own book. I made my own book. I wrote down all of the definitions, all of the important examples, which is, well, uh, which was almost everything. I wrote down everything and I made my own book. And that way I, and I took the time in order to just sit and write and sit and write and sit and write and until I understood it. Otherwise, if you're in a rush, you're not going to get it. So that's basically the meaning of um, that's basically the meaning of uh, um, the meaning of a of a um, binary operation star on a set A, right? Now, the question that we want to answer here is that was that we wanted to determine whether or not each of the definitions of star in this in this exercise that we are going to discuss right now. If each of the definitions given below is a binary operation and in the event that that star is not a binary operation you you want to give justification for your claim so let's let's go through these examples one by one and see if, if each is is a binary operation or not okay so now let's go through these like one a couple of these examples so again as we said before we wanted to determine whether each of the definitions of star given below gives a binary operation so for example number one is basically on z on z plus and defi define star define star by by a star b is equal to a minus b right now z plus is the all of the non-negative integers i suppose if i'm not mistaken let me i have to look this up really okay so it seems that basically it seems that z plus is the um is the is the the set of positive integers the set of positive integers means that zero is not there either meaning that z plus being the set of of positive integers
So the set of positive integers would be, meaning that z plus would be simply 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth, all the way up to infinity, right? So, um, so just to, 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 to basically to review these sets one, just, just once, of course, you know that the set of natural numbers is right it somewhere else so that we don't have to erase it here. So you know that basically the set of natural numbers is basically one, two, three, and so on and so forth. You know that the set of integers is basically zero, one, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on and so forth, right? That's the set of integers. Q is basically the set of rational numbers. The set of rational numbers. Meaning P by Q basically p by q where basically where p and q belong to p and q belong to z for example that's that's the set of rational numbers r is the set of real numbers meaning that all the well all the real numbers meaning that excluding the imaginary numbers all the numbers that you might know are basically the set of real numbers meaning that any number that can fit on this number line from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth, and negative 1, and negative 2, and negative 3, and so on and so forth. Any number that fits here, for example, uh, if this is 4, then 3 points, so then this number would be pi. Then, then, and for example, um, this number would be square root of 2, for example, which is something about 1.4 and so on and so forth. So, um, every possible number that you could imagine, whether it's a rational number, whether it's an irrational number, whatever that might be, it's, it's, it's basically, the, we call it the set of real numbers, right? We call it the set of real numbers. And um, of course, there is also the set of irrational numbers. I think that is denoted by Q prime or something like that. I'm not really sure about that. But then there is the set of, there is, uh, there is the set of Z plus, which is the set of positive integers the set of positive integers then there is the q plus the set of positive well, rational numbers set of positive rational numbers And then there is the set R plus, which is basically the set of positive real numbers. Now there is uh, some other some some other notation as well, which is basically the set of. There are a few more sets. that I cannot find over here right now and but those are those I cannot find here but um, but then there is um, there is some other there is some other there is some other notation which is basically for example Z uh, Z star they write it C, Z star like this, or they also write it Z star like this. Both are possible. And of course, there is controversy over this, which is that, which, which one is what and what is what. So there is, 
there is the problem in notation between mathematicians. It seems that the way that, I mean, based on what I read on the, on Wikipedia, something like that. In this book, basically the, the, the sets are denoted this way, Z and subscript star, for example. And, um, of course, whatever sort of book you read, of course, hopefully the notation is given in that book, so you have no problems there. Then there is also the set, for example, Q star, where, um, and you have basically R star. You have these sets as well. This is the set of, this is the set of non-negative, this is the set of non-negative integers. This is the set of non-negative integers, meaning that, uh, um, meaning that you have uh, basically non-negative, meaning that it's just not negative, meaning that you have basically 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. This is the set of non-negative integers. The set of basically, um, this is the set of the set of non-negative, this is the set of non-negative, uh, basically rational numbers. The definition would be the same except that basically P by Q where P and P and Q belong to Z such that P by Q is uh, not equal to, is not less than zero. But it can, um, and of course zero is not, is not a rational number. Um, so we have, we don't have the problem of zero there. Uh, because zero by zero is not defined in mathematics, of course. So the set of basically and of course, I've never actually seen Q star in in any in anywhere. I mean, it's just not 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 really. Um, it has no applications really. But if it if it had an application, it would be the set of non-negative rational numbers based on the notation that I have seen in the in these books. And there is the set of R star, which has a lot of application in these in these NCERT books, and that is that would be the set of the set of non-negative that would be the set of non-negative real numbers meaning that all the real numbers except for the except for the for the negative real numbers meaning that zero is also there right so that's basically um, a an overview of these sets and 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 so that some whenever you want to use them you can use them but wherever it is that you want to use them now coming back to this example so basically we want to to on z plus which is the set of positive integers which is basically essentially this set here we want to define a a defined star by a star b is equal to a minus b and we want to know basically whether star is a is an is an uh, uh, is an binary operation we want to know is star a a binary operation so in order to basically the, the condition for that is that star from basically from um, the condition is that the condition star uh, from basically the Cartesian product of Z plus z plus from the Cartesian product of z plus by itself to z plus has to be uh, has to be true right which is of course not the case which 
which is not the case because because uh, as a count as a, as a counter example for example you know that for example three belongs to uh, three belongs to basically z plus right and also five belongs to uh, five belongs to z plus now if i write um, if i write three minus basically three star three star five which would be three minus five based on this based on this rule I would get negative 2 which does not belong to z plus and therefore star is not a binary operation right so what this means is that as you can see that we basically we emphasize the fact that a star b wherever I, I wrote that thing this thing over here so a star b which was basically what i wrote over here this has to be a function we see we, we we had that as a part of the definition and of course it's not a function because there is there is there is an ordered pair for example three comma five which belongs to this set that is not the image of any that is not the image of any any element in the in the set of z plus meaning that you have you have basically these two sets over here this is z plus times z plus meaning that the cartesian product of z plus and z plus you and you will get a comma b's basically in this in this set and over here you have the set of z plus right so there is a three comma five that belongs to this set because three belongs to z plus and five also belongs to z plus two. so three comma five does belong to z plus but three comma five is not is not is not the image of anything over here because then you would have to have a negative two in this set so that then so, so to 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 be able to basically connect or map three comma five to negative two over here, but this does not exist in Z plus because Z plus is basically only the set of positive integers, and so just that it basically means that um, it basically means that there is an element in the domain of your function which is not the image of anything in the in the co-domain of the function, and so as a result of that, this 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 basically this is not a function and since it's not a function it's not a it's not a it's not a binary operation right so that's basically question number one now question number two we have uh, on z plus part two of this question we have okay so question number two is that on 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 basically on z plus you want to define you want to define star by by a star b is equal to a times b right and if you think about it it's actually a very um i mean this 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 whole business of uh, binary operations it's actually a very uh, it's actually a very beautiful system meaning that if you understand it then you can use it in many different ways in many i mean these are all concepts that you can use in any way that you want it, provided that basically your application fits into the definitions and everything that we have here then you can use it for whatever sort of purpose that you want for example you can use it in i don't know there is something that you want to do in wherever you you're you're working in physics in in electronics wherever you are working then you can you can you can basically use all of these uh, concepts these are all abstract constant concepts that you can use wherever you go it's it's actually very um 
very beautiful system, organized system of thought. So, on Z plus, basically, if you define star by A star B is equal to A times B, then there is no problem here because Z, Z plus is, is a, uh, is the set of basically positive integers. And then basically any two positive integers that you multiply together, you will get, you will get a positive integer. So, so then basically, so then, um, star, from basically from z plus times z plus to z plus would be would be a function right there would be no problem with that meaning that you cannot find any counter examples that that show that this is not a function so this is a function and so and so basically started is a binary operation Now, if you want to write this as a um, in a more um, <coughs> in a more organized way, you can say that, for example, it is it is seen that it is seen that basically for each a and b belonging to c to z plus for each a and b belonging to belonging to z plus. <coughs> there is a unique element a b there is a unique element unique element in element a b in z plus this means that this means that basically that um, star carries each pair a comma b to a unique element a star b is equal to a times b in z plus therefore star is a is a is a is a binary operation and that that basically that basically means that it's it's a function in the first place this means that basically star carries each pair a comma b each pair a comma b to a unique element to a unique element unique element a star b which is equal to a times b in z plus in z plus and therefore Therefore, star is a binary, is a binary operation, right? So that is that. So now, <coughs> part three of this question. <coughs> part three of this question, you have, you have an R. An R defined star by defined star by A star B is equal to uh, AB squared. So this is also a binary operation. Star here is also a binary operation because any two any two numbers basically in the set of real numbers that if you basically if you take any two numbers in the set of real numbers if you basically uh, raise b to the second power you would get a real number and then b squared would be a real number multiplied by a which is also a real number any two real numbers multiplied together would give you a real number therefore a b squared or a star b also belongs to r Meaning that star, star basically from R to R, from R times R to R given by, given by A star B is equal to AB squared is a, is a, uh, is a binary operation. 
right? It's a binary operation. And of course, you can use the same, the same argument that you used here. The, the same argument that we used here, you can use here, but, but for the sake of, um, we already, I mean, you already know what, we already know what we are talking about for the sake of saving time. I don't, I didn't write the whole thing. So, and, but this shows that basically star is a binary operation. Part four of this question. Part four of this question is on Z plus. On Z plus define, define star by star by basically a star b is equal to the absolute value of a minus b this is again a binary operation because you're dealing with this with the set of z plus right so and your your binary operation would be would some would be something like a star from z plus times z plus Two basically z plus defined by defined by a star b is equal to the, the square the the absolute value of a minus b right so um so basically any two numbers that you take from the set of um, positive integers if you take those two numbers and subtract one from the other it's possible that you get a positive number. Is it's it's possible that you get a positive? For example, you take three and five, both basically both a members of the set of Z plus, right? If you say three minus five, you will get negative two. Five minus minus three, you would get positive two. So negative two or positive two, when you take the absolute value of of either negative two or positive two, it will give you a positive two, which belongs to the set of, um, which belongs to the set of z plus, and therefore, star, as a binary, as a, basically from z plus times z plus into z plus defined by a star b, is actually is a binary operation. Is a binary operation, and again you can. You can use the same uh, argument that we used before. You can use the same argument that we used before over here. The same argument here in order to, in order to basically explain a little bit further if, if that's required. Number five is on Z plus. And Z plus you want to define star. You want to define star by by A star B. A star B is equal to A. So of course any two A A and B belonging to the set of belonging to the set of um, positive uh, basic the integers that you take <coughs> in any case a is going to belong to the set of well positive integers and a star b is going to be equal to a always right so which means that a star b is equal to a is always some number belonging to the set of inti positive integers which means that basically which means that star as a as a as from from basically z plus times z plus into z plus defined by defined by a star b is equal to a is a is a binary operation is a binary operation so and again you can use the same the same argument that we used before in order to uh in order to to explain further if that's that's if that's required so that was question number one um 
Question number two is uh, for each operation star defined below, determine whether star is binary, commutative, or associative. Of course, you understand that basically the uh, first a um, first basically you have a binary operation, and then it is commutative or associative. Meaning that if you pay, if you pay attention to the definitions that we that we had for commutative and associative, a necessary condition is that first you have a binary operation, and then the binary operation can be associative or commutative. Meaning that if you don't have the the binary operation in the first place, then there is no question of being uh, commutative or associative. So so now for the sake of um, to understand this further, let me write down the definitions of commutative of, of, of associative and then we will continue with the exercise. Okay, so about these definitions, um, now we, 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 we were looking for the definition for commutative and, and uh, uh, associative. Uh, commutative okay so there was there was this definition number 11 that we had so we said that definition definition number number 11 was a binary operation star a binary operation operation star on A uh, star on the set X on, uh, excuse me on the set X on the set X is called commutative so as you can see basically a um, it's a necessary condition that star is first of all is, is, is a binary operation so these things need to be uh, understood right so a binary operation star on, 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 on the set X is called commutative is called commutative if a star B if a star B is equal to B star a for every a for every a and b belonging to x right so if you don't understand this what this what this means is that um, what this means is that basically um, For example, let me give you an, a good example. Um, so, for example, we had we had we had an example number thirty-three, which was basically you wanted to show that. You wanted to show that basically uh, the that the that that the basically so this sign means basically the maximum, right? This this is this means maximum. It it just simply gives you the maximum of of any two numbers that that you give it. It gives you the maximum of those two numbers, meaning that meaning that it it will compare the two numbers and it will give you the bigger number, right? So the maximum of R to R, R to R, R times R into R, given by, given by basically A comma B is basically given by, of course, it has to be something like this. The, the maximum of A comma B is, is given by a comma b to max of a comma b or you can write it that way as well 
there is no problem with that given by basically by a comma b meaning that this is your domain and then that into the max of the max of a of a and b right um, and and then we also have basically this 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 notation over here which means the minimum the minimum of r times r which is the cartesian product of r and r into r uh, given by basically a comma b uh, into into basically the minimum of the minimum of a comma b right um, you want to show that these are that that these are binary operations are binary operations so of course you can see that um, of course, you can see that basically, let me separate this so that you don't get confused over here. So you can see that basically every, um, every order pair A comma B, uh, in the, basically in the case of which A and B belong to R, uh, when you, when you, when you basically, when you, when you want to take the maximum of any of those two numbers, of course, provided that A and B are, 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 set, are different numbers, one of them is always greater than the other one, right? Meaning that the maximum of A, A comma B is always basically this, 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 uh, this would be a, a, a binary operation because this, this is, this is basically a function, meaning that any two numbers that you compare, there is always a maximum between those two numbers. So every, every A comma B in, in this set is being carried over to a distinct element in R, right? And by the same logic, of course, you can show that any A comma B in, in this set R times R, is carried over to a distinct element the minimum of a comma b in r <clears throat> and as a result of that this is going to be a function as well which means that basically uh, this is also a binary operation now of course now we know that it's a binary operation but then the binary operation basically the maximum or minimum in this case uh, on the set R, for example, in this case, it is actually commutative because whether I take the, the maximum of A comma B or the maximum of B comma A, it's going to give me the same result, meaning that the maximum of 2 and 3 and the maximum of 3 and 2 in both cases is going to be equal to 3. And by the same logic, again, you can argue that basically, for example, the minimum of 2 and 3 and then, then the minimum of 3 and 2 is always going to be again equal to 2. So, so whether you take your ordered pair as 2 comma 3 or 3 comma 2, in all cases, you're going to get the same output, which means that basically the, the binary operation is commutative, right? And um, and so now you can use this in many types of situations, meaning that, for example, then you can show that, for example, the binary operation of addition on the set of real numbers is commutative, meaning that, for example, if you take 2 and 3 and add them together, it, it's going to be 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. And if you take 3 and 2 as well, and add them together, 3 plus 2 is going to be equal to 5. And so the, 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 and then based on that, you can say that the, the, the binary operation of addition on the set of real numbers is, is, for example, commutative. And so that's the meaning of basically a commutative binary operation, right? Um, That is the meaning of a, of a, of a binary operation. Now, there is a problem over here. There is a problem over here and these binary operations, 
if you want to take the binary if you want to take the star of for example let's say three numbers uh, for example let's say that you have for example two and you have two and three and five and let's say that the operation is addition for example if you write two plus three plus five that's going to be equal to 2 plus 3 plus 5. In both cases, you're going to get the same thing. So this, this statement is true. You have no problem with that. But then if the, if the, basically, if the, if the operation is, is subtraction and you have this, the exact same numbers, 2 and 3 and 5, the problem is that if you write 2, for example, minus, 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 minus 3, minus 5, that's not equal to 2 minus 2 minus 3 minus 5 because this is going to be equal to negative 1 minus 1 is going to be minus 5 is equal to negative 6 this is going to be equal to 2 minus negative 2 which is equal to 0 and so these are this this of course this statement is true but it's true that that the two things are not are not equal which means that basically, then technically you can say that basically the um, um, the the binary operation of addition on the set of real numbers is associative, but then the binary operation of subtraction on the set of real numbers is not associative. Meaning that when you want to consider subtraction, or whether or or when you want to consider, for example, division then you ha you explicitly have to specify and which number is being subtracted from which number or which number is being divided by which number meaning that for example 3 divided by 2 is not the same thing as 2 divided by 3 they are different numbers of course and so that brings us to the uh, to basically to the to i mean to get to get rid of this ambiguity in uh, in these binary operations we need uh, another definition and the definition is uh, definition number 12 and that definition is definition number 12 which is basically a binary operation star a binary operation star on, on basically let's write it this way a binary operation star uh, as on basically a on the from the Cartesian product of, of a and a into a is said to be associative is said to be associative associative if if basically if a star b star c is the same thing as a star b star c right so which means that for example in the case of if if a star is is defined by for example addition then it's going to be associative because for example 2 plus 3 plus 5 is the same thing as 2 plus 3 plus 5 but then if you if you define star as for example subtraction then that then the statement is would not be true and therefore you say that basically you you basically you have to you uh, define a an associative um, binary operation as as exactly this right so so that's basically um that's basically the definition of commutative and associative binary operations. And, and please note that in these two cases, basically, first of all, you have a binary operation and then the binary operation can be commutative or not commutative. It can be associative or not associative, right? So that's, you can, you can kind of say that being commutative or associative are simple, are simply properties of a, of a of a binary operation basically right so i'm going to um 
I'm going to end this video here. Um, I'm going to end this video here and then we will continue with this with exercise number two in the in the next video. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.